this afternoon's game here in Accra. Yeah, an important game. An important one in this contest. You look at it and think that it is very huge for entire lives and their chances of survival. They've lost all games in their last five games, but he extends even further than that. They come up against a side that just beat a very, very good Ash Gold team who are in high confidence now, but entire lives now would have to find a way of getting the results from this one. Definitely have to find a way to get the results from this game inter allies. It doesn't look good for them. I made a point earlier that if they drop points in this game, it could be recipe for disaster. And they know so well they don't have to drop their guard. They are spotting red and black jerseys with the Cape Coasters in mauve and yellow here at the Accra Sports Stadium. And in, in recent games for Dwarves, they performed well. They in their last five, they've lost just once, you know, drawn a couple of games. But a recent victory is what will resonate with them because it was a big win against a big team, a good team as well. And like we said, games are coming in thick and fast, and allies would know this. They would know that um, more defeats in their way, and they could be giving themselves an uphill task of surviving. And the allies have made just one change to the team that lost to Legon City. Imanol Ajete is replacing Kinsley Braye, Richmond Lamte in attack together with Shaibu Tofik and Nafiu Suleimana. Isa Ali, who committed that error resulting in Kotoko's goal the other day, is partnering Mohamed Abdul Kader in central defense for the 11 is to 1 boys. Danny Mushkanovic knows too well. It's an uphill task trying to bring this team back to winning ways. They are deep in form before he arrived. Ebushina Dwarfs have made two changes to the team that beat Ashanti Gold. Prince Bodo replaces. Prince Bodo takes the place of Gordon Adika as Moro Sumaila replaces Obed Bentum. The usual suspects in midfield. George Oyene Asamoah, Michael Asamoah, and Benjamin Aqua, the trusted guards of Ernest Thompson Corte. He has so much confidence in these guys, and they seem to be the strength of this Ebusuna Dwarfs team. Very good midfield trio of Aqua and the two Asamoahs. Yeah. 433 system, you see Dwarfs coming here with against a 4-4-2 system of entire lives. We expect that to be a 4-5-1 with Richard Lamte dropping into the midfield like we saw in their game against Kotoko alongside Abuga and Abanga. The midfield is, hasn't been the problem. Defensively, it's not been that bad. and hor It's not been horrible, you would say. What the problem then is would be with the front men. Emmanuel Ajeta today, who is starting out wide and Nafi Suleiman are starting out wide and if they can get quality balls into Tofik Saibu who's here to prove if he's a clinical finisher up front. Yeah, the outfit is beautiful, must be said. Dwarves, yeah. Everybody taking their turn around the center. Yeah. Not sure what is so special about it. Well, if the center holds, it's really for anybody to break through. Perhaps that is the logic behind it. Enter allies up against. Cape Coast Ebusia Dwarfs. Referee Patrick Ochre is assisted by Mohamed Tijani and Thomas Rigbindeye. Asamoa, Seydou Abubakar, and Simon Mate. All of them coming in from that victory over Shanti Gold will be relishing. Another victory here. In questions, and Lamte will be the first to ask questions with his drive that was blocked and this overhead kick.
Yeah. Brilliant from Shaibu Tofik. Yes, Shaibu Tofik there. The strike was weak, it was feeble, so he got a touch on it. Once he got the touch, the ball just took a, a very good bounce for him and he, he did well to try the overhead kick. Only dropping onto the top of the bar. Goalkeeper was struggling. You could see he was bothered about it. He was worried. He knew that could creep into the top corner. Had to extend himself, but fortunately for him, that was dropping onto the net. Despona Buga legitimately won the foul against Aqua, sets up Lamte, and this was brilliantly saved by Isa Razak. Yeah, Isa Razak did well there, but again, too easy to walk through the midfield of Dwarves, but lovely effort there. Goalkeeper was equal to the task as well, and just tipped that over the bar brilliantly. Abuga. Abanga tried his life from this distance, and it tipped the bar. And when this one was very close, yeah, very very close. I thought goalkeeper was beating. His body language didn't show that, but that ball just maybe had it taken a little more dip, was going to get under the crossbar. Nice touch. The, the beautiful drive as well to go with it. Interesting exchanges as Dwarfs had their opportunity here with this cross coming in from Moro, but Asamoa a shit late. Yeah. To pick out that cross Boy, into a good right space. in the box. Boy across the face of goal. Asking and begging for a contact, but just arriving, like you said, a shade late and could apply the finishing touch. Corsa dropped this one for Mate, but it wasn't well executed this free kick. It was a poor effort. Nowhere near troubling anybody. Allies, obviously the better of the two sides. In this first half, Lamte got this one straight to goalkeeper Isa Razak. So first half of this game here at the Accra Stadium has ended and it's into Allies nil. Dwarfs nil. Ball goes straight to Ali. Asamoa. Aqua. Dancing around the box and he scores. Oh, what a goal. Benjamin Aqua has scored a beauty at 70 minutes into Allies nil, Dwarfs 1. And amongst all the players in that Dwarfs jersey, he's the one who looked like the one who had the magic in his boots. And if something was going to happen for them, he was going to be the one to make it happen. And he made that happen. Lovely feat by him. Showed great skill here. Body check, body move. And it just drills that one low and hard. Always moving away from the goalkeeper. Into the bottom corner. Lovely feet by him. Lovely body swerve as well. And once he shoves the ball into his left feet. You just know it. You just know that he has what it takes to make so it happen. You see those players from Allies. One, two, three and four. But nobody seemed to have you know, gotten closer. And didn't even know what he was about to do. So they couldn't stop him. No blame to the defenders there in my opinion. Because... That was quick in the way he moved. Abuga. To Braille again. And Asamoa will try to pick out Moro. That's it. Great goal. Oh, what a goal. This is fantastic. The awareness. The vision to go past the goalkeeper from that distance. This is a wonderful goal. Uh, the boys from Cape Coast now are showing their swimming skills. Moro Smiler. <laughs> With their backstrokes. Uh, lovely swimming skills that you see. But that is because they scored a really good goal. But you can pick all the... That is Bray again looking, losing the ball in the half there. A lovely pick out by him. Quick question about the goalkeeping here. What is he stepping off his line that far for? Why defenders. is he leaving his line to come that far where he cannot use his hand? So it's a goalkeeping error if you ask me. But of course, he needed somebody to apply the finishing touch. And he said, thank you very much. Empty next. There I have my goal. Game over. Game over for Inter Allies. That sums up their afternoon. Yes, referee Patrick Autry has brought proceedings to an end at the Accra Stadium. The woes, the troubles and the crisis at Inter Allies continue. They've lost again and in their 10th defeat of the season Ebusua Dwarfs have beaten them by 2-0. Spectacular goals from Benjamin Aqua and Moro Smiler. 
but we don't finish our attacks. You know, it's still like we are playing too much around, losing too many balls in their half. We are shooting too much from rages where you don't score. We are talking about in the halftime, coming out, having the biggest chance. Again, we don't have put it. And out of nowhere, boom, you're behind again. Conclusion just have to be, we are not good enough. Yeah, but uh, we, we, we actually had to size our opponents up in the first half. So um, in the dressing room, I told them, look, we could do it. Because uh, the loopholes was more in the midfield, and we shouldn't allow their midfielders to play. And I think it worked to perfection, and we just got the goals that we very much needed. So I think it was the pep talk in the dressing room that did the magic. All right, so uh, Ben Aqua seemed to be on another level today, really enjoyed himself, was all over the place, causing problems for the Allies team. How good a player is he, and, and how much do you enjoy working with him? Yeah, this is um, third, um, fourth um, man of the match, MVP. So I should tell you the caliber and the quality he's made of. He's, he's actually, I just asked him to enjoy himself in the game, and he did just that, and he proved his worth. He's a national asset, I always say it. Uh, the last time um, the under-20 coach was saying that is the kind of player he was missing in his team. So I think his age is just a year over the under-20, yeah. so he just couldn't, you know, pick him up. But I think uh, the local Black Stars, the Meteor or something, he's good to go. All right, coach, I'm not sure you've seen the table yet, but this victory takes you to 19 points and on fourth place. That is it. You've seen it we, already? We, 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 we are not there yet. It's a promise I've made myself. We are not there yet. Mm. We are not there yet. And we are not, uh, um, you know... Uh, swollen headed will still push more up, up, up. All we right, have coach. a target, and I think we're going to meet it, and that is our plan. Can you share the target with us? Be in the top four by the close of the uh, season. All the best, and good luck with that. Thank you very much.